Welcome to Power Rift, ladies and gentlemen. You join me in the middle of a very scientific experiment. We're trying to test if the new Nexon.EV can drift. There's only one way to find out. Wait, 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 wait. Before that, I know I said all new, but this isn't all new how you think it's all new. It's got the same battery, just 12 kilometers more range, just a bit more power. So what's so all new about it? Well, as you can see, pretty much everything else. With this update, Tata has given the electric Nexon the same sharper suit the fossil fuel one is wearing. But instead of giving it blue accents, Tata has given the EV more aerodynamic bumpers and a tube of light at the front. And the changes, though small, make the Nexon.EV so much nicer to look at. It's got the same new interior as well, including the new digital instrument cluster with the awesome navigation functionality, the same illuminated logo that sits behind a very scratch-prone panel, but it also gets a bigger infotainment screen. I don't know what your take is on whether size matters or not, but 12 inches, boy, that's pretty big. And the big deal here is the arcade.ev suite of apps that lets you stream movies and videos or even play games while you charge. And speaking of things happening while you're charging, the front light bar has a really cool animation to show you the charging status. It's very Rivian-esque. The screens and menu layouts on the other hand are very Land Rover-esque and this was a much needed update. While the colors are bright, I would have liked the 360 degree cameras to be higher resolution and in my experience, the screens are still very glitchy. More than anything else, I hope Tata gets that fixed before delivery start. One thing that didn't need fixing though is how the old Nexon EV drove and this one has the same awesome ride quality. It goes through bumps like a tank and it has real good stability at triple digit speeds. It has the same instant torque and the same short footedness through corners. But the question is, will it drift? Now the producers have told me to say this line before I start. Stunts performed by professional idiot on a closed course do not recreate. Professional idiot? Now, while Tata has put a dot between Nexon and EV, power has gone up by more than a dot because of the new and lighter Gen 2 motor. It's faster in a straight line and thanks to 12 kilometers more range on both the medium and long range variants, I get to try a few more slides. But even then, the answer to the question is sadly no. ESP and TC can't be switched off and there's an electronic handbrake. So no matter how hard I try to drift it, it's not happening. But if you drive this long range Nexon.EV like a human and not like a monkey, you can get over 285 kilometers on a single charge. And I'm getting a little bit wet. Regen is adjustable via the paddles and both variants now come with a 7.2 kW AC fast charger with V2L and V2B capability as well. The Nexon still has ample luggage space, room in the back for adults shorter than me and enough range to do short trips outside the city and many many trips inside it on a single charge. I'm 5'10 if you're wondering and the Nexon EV is 10 on 10 at least in terms of the sales because there was nothing really wrong with the old Nexon EV except the fact that it was getting a little bit, well, old. This new one fixes that. It looks really good. I mean, really, really, really good. The interior is also a whole lot nicer and there's a lot more tech in there as well. Some of it works, some of it not so much. There is also a little bit more range and overall, the most popular electric SUV on the market just got a whole lot better. I'm Karan, thank you for watching Power Rift. Have an awesome day ahead and I'll see you on the next one.
still watching, firstly, I want to thank you. And secondly, this is the part of the video that's not really scripted, but there's a few other things I really wanted to tell you about the Nexon EV that didn't fit into the script. So here goes. Firstly, the regen paddles. Now, the plus paddle on a regular car is to upshift and usually go faster. And the minus paddle is usually to downshift, have more engine braking and slow down. Now here, the regen is sort of counterintuitive in that sense. The minus paddle is to reduce regen and basically reduce the amount of deceleration. And the plus paddle is to increase regen and increase the amount of deceleration. So if you want to slow down and use the paddles to slow down, you have to click up the right paddle to increase the slowing down process. I think that's a bit counterintuitive. Secondly, the steering wheel has not been straight on this car. It's a little bit off to the right. And if I hold it straight, it pulls fairly hard to the left side of the road. On a brand new car, a steering wheel that's not aligned, I don't think that's a very good sign. Thirdly, this digital instrument cluster has basically conked off in terms of the range readout pretty much 10 minutes into the drive. Fourth is the drive mode selector, which has the toggles as city, then eco, and then sport. I feel it should be eco, city, and sport because in my head, eco is the most economical and city is the one that's in the middle of eco and sport. So why is eco in the middle of the two? I don't get it. Anyways, thank you for watching Power Rift and thank you for sticking around to the end.